Adjust it 36 degrees. 36 Longitude. degrees. Longitude. On to the left, to the right, back. Oh, you, got a, you got earphones too? Now? Yeah, I've been rocking the earphones for a while. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Pissed. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff. That's what happened. When did you, you grow a beard? Oh wait, you already had that. You already had that. You haven't, that. you haven't been here since what? February? It's been a while. That's yeah, been yeah. a while. Let me just turn my uh, thing off. Hey, so. Hey, so. All right, all right. Welcome everybody to the F Word Podcast for the first time in a very long time. Nick's back. Hey, hey. hey. and I'm gone. Hey, Nick's back. <laughs> um, we are live on our F Word Podcast. Uh, Instagram, which is substantially less people than the other one because it has been officially deleted uh, and it's just due to copyright. So those BS copyright things that have been going around, unfortunately, uh, it got Anthony too. And the shitty thing again, like he mentioned, they don't give you a warning. Arturo's in. Yes. Yay. They don't give you a warning. No, which is like... They just delete it and then like you have to Like slap your hand it. once and then don't do it again or let him know. Yeah. But yeah, that's and unfortunate. Apparently, they let him know. But he didn't got lost get in those. The mail. Yeah, yeah, he said he never got any Junk of those things. Mail. So, whatever. Um, but anybody that's here, thank you so much for listening. Whoever listened to last week's episode, I commend you because uh, I couldn't go back and listen to it. Most of the time, I listened through the whole episodes, but because it was that solo episode by myself, I was just oh. like, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do whatever I can. Nothing was accomplished. I don't think anything was really <laughs> said that was that important. But I got through it somehow. It was just your TED talk. <laughs> It was essentially, yeah, it was essentially a TED Talk on TV finale. I was more proud of my title, The Good, The Bad, and The Empty, and like my logo or whatever that I came up with for the poster than anything else. So, whoever listened to it last week, thank you. We are good, Arturo. How are you, man? Uh, For everybody else who's listening, from wherever you're listening to, uh, hello. I hope you're having a good start to your weekend if it is indeed Saturday. If not, I just hope you're having a good day. With me today is Nick, finally, and (laughs) Vass. Mm-hmm. Hi. What's up, gentlemen? What up? Not much. Not much. It's a great That's day. It. That's it. Great Not much day. to say. It's been pretty chill, lax. Except yeah. for the fact that your tire blew out before we yeah, got here. Yeah, it's unfortunate. It's what a good thing you, you live do? close. I was able to pick I you up. I have the worst luck with tires. This is your and second actually, one. Me too. No, it's not even my second one. It's, it's been more. No, I mean like in the past month, I think oh, it's yeah. your second oh. one. Yeah, actually, yeah, within the month, mm-hmm, month mm-hmm. or two, I've had this is my second flat. Did you run over something or? Probably. I go to that one Probably. subdivision <laughs> and every time I catch a tire. Oh, man. I used to work there and like my tires were riddled with it. It worked truck. There was just like probably five or six patches in each tire. And I hope that's not a trend, unfortunately. But mm-hmm. yeah, it was a mm-hmm. clean those streets. Clean those streets. Um, what's Arturo saying? Nothing. Nice to see Nick back. Hey, 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 thank you. Uh, yeah, good to be back. And so, if you are watching us live, yes, we do have official mic stands for the boys. I'm are not these the new? Like today, are, new? That we one is one. new from two days ago. Um, and that one I got about two weeks ago. Oh, okay, that's when we that that one was new the day we did the podcast. You, me, and Anthony when he first got his account deleted, and we Ooh, yeah. just went live. We didn't go live. We just did a just did that recording. Yeah. It was a delete warming present. Yeah. Is it yeah. too yeah. soon? Well, what's funny about that, <laughs> what's funny is that I started that episode was brought to you by nobody and I didn't even think about that. Time. This is only three viewers right now. <laughs> okay, go three again. Three million. Jesus. Are we starting from the very beginning? No, we're not starting from the very beginning. We're just hey, going to start from it's wherever. Nick from the <laughs> <airport>. <laughs> no, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, sorry for cut out there for the people that were listening. I don't know how long it was cutting out for. This thing's been doing it lately and I have no idea why and it's super, super, super annoying. So, is that the new laptop? This is the new laptop. It re- okay. It records everything much better than the other one, as in I don't have too much feedback coming in. Yeah. But for some reason, it, cuts it out. skips yeah. and it cuts out and it just drives me up the wall. But soon I'm getting that H6 and it's going to change the whole thing. So you went to a movie by yourself. Go. So uh, it was just one of those happenstance. No one really could go at the time I was going to go. And I was just, I didn't want to start a new Netflix series. I didn't want to watch any old t- TV game nothing i was like you know what i really want to see this i'm gonna go yeah so i got my ticket i went and it was your popcorn i did get my pop did you get your pop i did get a pop did Did you get your candy i did get a candy which candy m&ms from the top shelf obviously top two shelves combo one kind of peanut m&ms no just regular Uh, i've been getting regular 
Really? I used to get the peanut See, all the I don't time, like, but I get the I, regular. I wish you could mix and match the combo a little bit more because I usually like a small popcorn and a large drink because I don't like that much popcorn. Yeah. I just want to have a taste the there almost way. kind of thing. Yeah. I love all the So popcorn. it's like I don't really get the combo. I just buy it all separately and whatever. You're one but of those. I'm one of those. <laughs> yeah. So I buy them all separately. It cost me eighty six dollars. So that's how it led me to uh, to go to my first movie by myself. And like, I mean, I won't opt to go to it all the time, but I mean, it's not terrible. But you know, it's always nice to have that conversation with people, like we talked about on the show. It's like it's nice to have that interaction, reminisce about what you just saw and what you like. You kind of do your own mini review post movie all the time. But essentially, that's all post movie. True. So during the movie, you mm-hmm. you don't have to worry about seats for anybody. Like for me, it's yeah. you don't have to worry about seats for anybody. You don't have anybody to talk to. You just mm-hmm. kind of focus, and it kind of brings in everything. Yeah. yeah. So. But yeah, going into Aladdin, uh, I think it holds pretty good. It holds true to the original. Like I mean, you got to understand they had to change stuff up because obviously the genie and Will Smith did an amazing job as a genie. You definitely he he made it his own, and he had to. You can't. He did some callbacks to Robin Williams for sure. Mm-hmm. But all of it was like the like we talked. I think we kind of mentioned like it's like a Hitch and Fresh Prince kind of genie combined, all combined, and it was it was it hold true completely. Uh, they changed some of the sequences of how things went down. Mm-hmm. Um, I, there's one piece of it I don't really like. Uh, it has to do with Princess Jasmine. She has that new song, uh, uh, Speechless. I think. I I don't know. Anyways, she has a, it's an original song. I think they created just for this version. Disney and and stuff like that, but they do have to make it their own in their own way, right? So their mojo, exactly. So no, I think it's definitely worth a watch, and I, to me, it holds true. I think they're doing pretty good with the Disney remix. I can't say there was anyone that's like, oh, this is terrible, mm-hmm. but like from Jungle Book, they had the Beauty and the Beast one, and then now they have this, and then Lion King's coming out what in a month less, mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. so. Yeah, July, July something. Yeah, so lots to look forward to, and I think they're on the right path for sure. And I, you gotta understand how they have to change stuff up, but there is that course core part of the whole story is still present there for sure did you find i mentioned this lot other two or three weeks ago mm-hmm. um whereas the first one is all genie like if you want to remember stuff yeah. you remember robin williams and you remember the genie yeah this one did it seem like it was more balanced where yes the genie was there mm-hmm. but he it wasn't all on him like robin williams was in the first aladdin yeah i think there was a better split this way yeah i would have to agree with that this they did give a lot more time to i would say between aladdin and jasmine it, jasmine got a little bit more mm-hmm. in her own way mm-hmm. uh it was like the story was driven with her in mind well which yeah. makes sense mm-hmm. but you'll see how prominent it stands on when you see the film itself but like if you're to talk hierarchy of i would still mm-hmm. say jasmine and the genie were pretty tight for mm-hmm. let's say how much how much screen, uh, time. screen time, how much, you know, the story was driven by them and then versus Aladdin, he was kind of there supporting along the way. But if you mm-hmm. want to kind of give it a, a level thing, Jasmine and Genie seemed a little bit higher and then Aladdin was kind of under. Which is really weird because the movie's called Aladdin. Aladdin. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. And even in the cartoon, it seemed it was more like Genie and Aladdin kind of neck and neck in yeah. terms of the focus and, and Jasmine's secondary. Yep. So and I think this has to do obviously with the movement of, you know, feminism and all that stuff so they're definitely giving the prominence to princess jasmine in this and naomi scott yeah. did an amazing job and he's doing it again hold on son of a bitch it's not okay. cutting out it's just skipping no like it's trying to load and i don't know i don't understand why it's going to drive me up the wall buffering again. yeah right loose connection is that a loose connection Maybe. Let's see if that works. It seems you, to be going. This is what happens when you work with free equipment. Are you? Were you more 
excited about the Lion King? I know G was more excited about the Lion King over Aladdin. Oh, yeah. But are you, what's uh, your preference you know when what? you saw? I, I would say out of all of them, I think we saw Lion King first out of all of them. So I think we have the, I have that instant connection with Lion mm-hmm. King more than, than Aladdin. But mm-hmm. Aladdin, I would say I've probably watched just as much, if not more. Yeah. So I, I'm equally as excited for both. But it, you know, when you hear a Lion King, I'm like, yes, Lion King. And especially after seeing what they did with Jungle Book for myself, I was like, okay, if they can do that. As soon as I saw Jungle Book, I'm like, okay, it's only a matter of time before they roll out Lion King for sure. Yeah. So, but uh, no, with Aladdin, they did it justice. I think it was good. It's worth a watch. And yeah, as much as everyone complained about how Will Smith was going to look, it, it looks fine. Yeah. It's good. How was... Um that's true. How was Jafar? Jafar, you know what? I because I heard a couple times, like um, in a Casuals mo- review, he was saying how Jafar was just like a throwaway, didn't matter, inconsequential in, in his own way. Yeah, I could womanize. see that. Eyes. <laughs> but he was kind of more that he had that menacingness versus like uh, not with the voice as we saw in the original, mm-hmm. but more on his like his. Actions. His demeanor and stuff like it was more creepy than it was um, menacing. I would say. Oh, okay. Let's call it creepy. Okay. In in that kind of context, I would say if you're kind of compare the two. Mm-hmm. So yeah, interesting. But it, it all tied together. I think you know partly like having those blinders to him, like oh it's Aladdin again. I get to see it. So it's like and live action. So but I did pick a few things. I'm like I I could have done without that much of that. So mm-hmm. but I think it all held true. Um, would you go to mo- another movie by yourself again, or would it be just circumstantial no. again? <laughs> It'd be circumstantial. Hon- mm. Yeah, honestly, I do enjoy going with like people and having that conversation. I usually do have a regular group. We go on like those Sunday nights and stuff like that. So, I it'd have to be one of those like perfect storms kind of thing where it's like, you know what, a perfect I, storm of loneliness. Sure, <laughs> it's like perfect yeah. storm of loneliness. <laughs> <laughs> the sea was angry that day, my friend. The sea was angry that day. <laughs> But yeah, uh, it was good. Interesting. Uh, did you guys see the Ford versus Ferrari trailer? Trailer. I did. It was awesome. It's really good. I'm so it's about the Le Mans 1966 when the GT40 was first introduced. Okay. And it stars Christian Bale as the driver and uh, Matt Damon, I think, as the brainchild behind the Matt movie. Damon plays Carol Shelby. Okay. Right. And uh, mm-hmm. and then you have uh, Christian Bale plays Ken Miles or Mills, and mm-hmm. he's the driver of the Ford GT. Oh, okay. And, and it's uh, the first time that... that it was the first event where Ford actually beat Ferrari in yeah. Le Mans because they were on. Obviously, it's Ferrari. So, there, it's, it's like a David versus Goliath type of story. Yeah, and well, they have like uh, what Ford? Uh, what's the name? Not Ford. What's the original? Name? Anyways, he's the second, not the original Ford, but the son. Oh yeah, and he's a. Uh, I can't remember who was played by. But yeah, no, it looks good. It looks I am good. I think it kind of emulates how uh, Rush was done with. Uh, Chris Hemsworth with uh, Nikki well, Lauda oh, okay. and um, well, they're different. James though. Hunt, no, but I'm just saying that the the style for for a racing style uh, movie. Oh, you was, felt shades I, of it. I, I like felt shades felt of it beat, again. Like I'm like, you know what? This could be another Rush, 100 yeah. percent, because it's, it's another good movie. iconic, you know, duo or head to head kind of thing. So, but Rush, I love, is one of my favorite movies out there. Well, the difference with this one is that it's not so much Damon versus. No, 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 whereas no. that one was Hemsworth versus Brutal. I get that, um, yeah. But this one's more for yeah. just versus Ferrari. But yeah. I, I get what you mean, where it had an essence of it had a feeling of rush, like it had a oh, cool, yeah. cool feel to it. Yeah, it looks really good. Mm. Like it looks really, really good. And James Mangold, who did uh, Logan, he's the one directing it and he produces it. So or he's producing it as well, along with some other people. So that's also very good. Yeah. Um, uh, apparently Jay Z became the first hip hop billionaire. Yeah, I saw that, th- which is pretty freaking I awesome. I thought he was already there, but I thought so. And really. I thought Puff Daddy beat him there first. And I was talking, I was, so I was, I was looking I was up online, and mm-hmm. apparently he's at eight hundred and twenty million, which is obviously no small feat. Yeah. Um, but it's I, I honestly thought P Diddy had hit it first too. I but guess it, is this like net worth kind of thing? Is that how they're? I think it's overall from all of his all the things that he has from uh, clothing to music so net, to everything. Net worth, oh, net worth deal yeah. net worth yeah. is is in the billion. So which is really sweet. Especially yeah, would it be you, based on just cash? I mean, yeah, yeah, I can't imagine. Yeah. Maybe Puff Daddy beat him in cash, but net worth mm. was. I don't know if no, because it would be apples to apples. They would still yeah. do both. Like no, know, I don't know why worth. I had that in my head that Puff Daddy beat him to it. It's first. because he's. The thing is, because a lot of people still think Jay Z is a is a rapper, and that's his only line of income. Where Sean Combs has been 
in the forefront yeah. for style for yeah. for Ciroc. Fashion, he's been yeah, from fashion to booze and and all, everything in between. He has been doing so many more things earlier, I think. But yeah. I think that's also because Jay Z's was more behind the scenes. Um, an interesting thing though, Ethan told me about this. I don't know the exact figure, but um, Beyonce is almost close to them on almost just music alone, which is unbelievable. That's, yeah. Like, especially were, this day and age where everything's downloaded. Yeah, man. Yeah. Because uh, if you were to take, let's say Puff Daddy has 10 things, Jay-Z has 10 things, and Jay-Z just happened to beat out on one of his things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Beyonce, let's, has, ha, let's say, has five, and she's still up there. She's yeah. she's batting way higher than they, those guys are. Well, she does have the fashion line, right? That yeah, her that's also her, really big. That she did, yeah. I forget the, it starts with D. Okay. The House of Daria or something like that. Okay. Oh, yeah. And yeah, no. No, it's like it's Daria, yeah. but like basically, she did it as a project for her sister Solange. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, yeah, and then like it, it took off and it's doing huge. So I know there's yeah, like the music, there's the fashion, and I'm sure a lot of it has to do with like they don't say it, but is, is real estate too, right? Like for sure, they've yeah. probably got a ton of like properties and stuff. They like have that. to factor everything in. Yeah. I, I would imagine they factor everything in. I wonder but, where I, the rock stands now. I don't think he's even close. I wouldn't say he's not a billionaire for sure, but like he's you think about him, he's got a pretty good empire. He's got yeah, like that's between only, that's pretty new though. Like, sponsorships. Yeah. But he's also got um I you know wrestling. seven bucks productions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's also got um he does tequila. So yeah, he's so. got like a booze empire. I'm just thinking, like, where does he stand right now? Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Actually, well, I'll look it up. The Rocks, uh, net the worth. Rocks, net worth. True, or true. Like he thought that Dr. Dre got there first once he sold Beats. I think he's third, he's third. third or fourth. Mm-hmm. See, I wonder if they're splitting hairs now and they're putting like Dre in the rap section and Jay Z in the hip hop for whatever reason. Again, net worth is everything. I'm just, so, I'm just, I'm just trying to tell you, like, if oh. you're talking first hip hop artist. You're gonna if, put yeah. Jay Z in the hip hop section yeah. and put him in rap, and then put him like in rap just for his, just to... sorry. Th- that's it's a blanket statement. They're not going to do first rap, first hip hop, first R and B, first know, whatever. Just, oh, okay. So I th- I think based on that, it's just hip hop encompasses the whole thing. That is oh. the movement, at least in my eyes. That is the movement. What's really interesting though is that both Jay Z and Sean Combs are from uh, New York. Mm-hmm. Um, I keep forgetting where Pete Diddy's from, but Jay Z's from Marcy Projects. So you know, both New York based people where arguably hip-hop originated from and i don't even think it's arguably it, it, it was born there at least mm-hmm. the, that movement uh the rock's total net worth is an estimated 220 million that's uh, built, lower than i thought built yeah. up over 25 years um but you gotta remember he hasn't yeah. blown up in but, the past five years at yeah most that's so, true these guys yeah. have been doing it for a long yeah. time like since i can remember they have well, been dre's huge. been active what since he was probably 18 19 well, and but not even just that. To Nick's point, with all the things that they're that he's doing, the Rock's doing now. I bet yeah. you in ten years, I bet you five to ten years, he'll be there. He'll be there. So yeah, Jay-Z, especially if everything progresses the I think way Jay-Z that it's going. Started later than them, even. So that's actually. Probably, I don't know. I don't know when he was first on the scene. Yeah. Either age. way, really, really cool. Um, I'm a huge fan of Jay Z. So. Yeah. Um. Okay. Robert Pattinson is officially Batman. Yeah. It is official. Mm. It is happening. It is. Uh, I'm excited for it. Mm-hmm. Um, we talked. You and I talked about it, Nick. You. I'm imagining you're thinking Robert Pattinson from like just as Twilight, right? Yeah. Yeah. When you look at him though, and some of like his pictures and stuff like that, you can you see Batman? Are you excited for this? We never got a chance to talk about it. You know, I'm. I'm honestly, I I think he would do a good job. Like mm-hmm. I know he's. I'm used to him. Like I've typecasted him yeah. as the guy. You know, from Twilight. Twilight. Uh, Even, I did too. From but the, well, he's also weird. got that ago, look, but, though, right? Yeah. He's got that look where I think he, jaw. yeah, he's got the jaw, yeah. and I think he he could actually pull the role off. And yeah. it takes us back to Ben Affleck, where we're like, oh god, Ben Affleck's Batman, and then he did it like a killer job, right? In so, Batman versus Superman, I was super impressed in it. Unfortunately, yeah. Justice League, it seemed like he just didn't care, but he was also overshadowed by everyone else. Yes. So yeah. it's kind of yeah. A, but uh, you know, I think he'll do a good job. I, I read that. that, that one's yeah, a big I read deal. that article that you told that uh, linked with that, like that he's official and why, how he got picked and stuff like that. And it was pretty interesting how yeah. Matt Reeves had his process. Like I was looking for someone very specific. So basically, uh, Robert Pattinson. Well, I've got it right here. Well, okay, it's go. from com- I found it on ComicBookMovie.com, dot um, which was then that was shared by uh, Cinema Blend. And so uh, the questions Reeves. And the Warner Bros. wanted to answer, did he embody the character? How did their eyes look and act? Is is there a specialness to them? Because Nicholas Holt was also doing it, who plays Beast in the X-Men movies. Yeah. Uh, Reeves wanted very specific things. 
and he just ended up checking up all those boxes. Um, 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 it's going to be set in the 90s, mm, yeah. which I think is a, is a smart Reluctant move. to find he's stuck in the 90s again. Sorry. <laughs> 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 well, I think it's a good move because it, like, it goes on to say he's not tied to the DCU. He can do kind of what he wants. He mm-hmm. doesn't have to tie it to anything. But now we're like, even in the back of our minds, we're excited to see the Batman movie. Mm-hmm. But it's um, how many more Batmans are we going to get? I would be more than happy if they kind of waited a little bit and wait for the kid who played Batman in the Gotham series to get a little bit older. They'll never work do that. With that. I know they won't, but... It would have been nice. They're, they're going to have a lot of villains he in did, there, too, He did though. a good job as, mm-hmm. as a Bruce Wayne, young Bruce Wayne, kind of mm-hmm. turning into that. And I haven't seen the finale yet for the Gotham series, so I'm interested to see how that got set up. But What's the significance of the 90s for Batman? Well, uh, like, I think... Is there really a time period? And, and I'm asking that like not yeah. to be ignorant, but like, no, no, no. it just kind of seems like it does. there's no real time period other than... Like there was the original Batman, which you could have like the gangster, like yeah. the forties feel to it. But I think the grittiness of the nineties actually kind of like in New York too, it kind of had that. Maybe that's why they they gravitate towards that because even some of the earlier Batmans had that eighties, nineties, like eight, late eighties. Like the Michael then. Keaton was, was like 90s. the eight late. It was nineteen eighty nine when that yeah. came out. Yeah, but so when the, for me, it's when, not when the movie comes out. The time period will allow you to structure your film in a way that is unencumbered by uh, unencumbered or doesn't have to fight against the technology of the time. I think it's more of a technological thing. So Batman's gadgets in the 90s now are nothing. Right. Right. Even in the Dark Knight, so a lot it's of more the stuff of a detective, was, like the actual detective that he was. I don't know about that, but even yeah. just his gadgets in general in the 90s are like people don't have that there was barely any there wasn't internet until 92 so if it's 1990 with no internet and he happens to have a system where he can track people and Mm -hmm. and and uh have radio connectivity with his gadgets and everything like that it's much more of an advantage to batman than if it it was set now and he is fighting against the the technology that has been evolving very quickly mm-hmm. in the recent years. That's that's what I surmise if they do uh, if they do a period piece yeah. like that. Yeah, at least for for someone. I think who Val Kilmer's was around tense. that era too. Was it yeah, not? Val yeah. Kilmer's The Batman Returns was in the mid nineties or whatever. Is when they filmed it. When now. they filmed it, yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, and so, uh, and with the fact that they're going to have a lot of villains, they got Catwoman, they got the Penguin. I don't know if they're going to bring Riddler in. Um, all in the first film? Like, all in this film, they're so bringing them all in? It's going to feel, from what I understand, it almost feels it's a detective movie first and foremost from what Matt Reeves is saying, or or closer to that, where he is going to be trying to hunt down these characters. Very, very similar to, like, the Arkham games in a way where he's discovering, I think it was Arkham Origins when he was discovering who these people actually are and, you know, finding them for the first time, mm-hmm. which I think is really cool because we've never actually seen Detective Batman, right? Mm-hmm. Which is, I, personally, I think is one of the the secondary next to his fighting. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I don't know how many they're going to do though. And yeah, you could, you could run the risk of overstuffing the, the, well, that's the thing, right? Like how many villains were there that like, I mean, in the Batman universe, they got spread out though. Yeah. It's true. And that's the thing, right? Like, I mean, if you're going to put five of them in the first one, it's like, okay. And then we got Mr. Freeze. (laughs) (laughs) And it's like, "Eh, wah, wah. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the other one is uh, wonder woman poster came out, which I think looks, Awesome. Yeah, it's very good. So that was like, in our chat there. That was 84. pretty cool. Are they behind on releasing a trailer? Is that why they kind of, I think, was it that why they kind of released something as a tidbit? It's like, here's something for now until we <laughs> here, can get a trailer. Stay busy with this. They're not going to yeah. be at Hall H. So traditionally, they've been at Hall H at uh, San Diego oh. Comic-Con. Yeah. Um, and they're not going to do that anymore. That's when the release is for some reason. I don't oh, know okay. what it is. But that's when they usually reveal this stuff. So Patty trailer, Jenkins though. was like, Take a look at this poster. And it's really cool how they had the W in there. Yeah. And all the colors. And her suit looks real good. Actually, at first glance, I thought I was like, that looks exactly like Aquaman's a little bit. Because like the way they had like the scaly part, but it was kind of with the colors. Oh. I think it was blending differently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it did like I was like, that kind of looks like an Aquaman suit. <laughs> I was thinking Ferrero Rocher. Oh. <laughs> and then I wanted wow. a Ferrero Rocher. Did you get <laughs> Ferrero? No. Oh. Okay. That's the cool thing about being an adult. If I feel like a Ferrero Rocher, I can just Do they it. have an off season? Ferrero oh, Rocher? Yeah, oh yeah. Okay. I think they have them all year round. I, they they do, don't they? I, I don't hope know. So. I I've never really yeah. gone them outside of Christmas time, so I don't know actually to be honest. Like mm. that's how it used to be with the Tofafe ones too, or they used to Tofifi. be seasonal. Tofifi. Yeah. Say Tofafe. That's what it's how it's pronounced. It's Tofifi. No, it's Tofafe. Since uh, when? Since the commercials. Tofafe. 
what tough is our, of faith. What does Arturo say? All he says is that uh, he read that Hawkman and Hawk Girl might come out in it. In uh, what? Wonder Woman? In the Batman. In the Batman? Oh. See, oh. aren't they in the I Titans? Kn- I think they're in the Titans series as well right now. I don't know. Because that sounds very familiar. Yeah, I don't know. All I know, all I know is that that poster looks real Arturo. good. Yeah, <laughs> show us your notes. <laughs> where's, yeah, the where's the bibliography? <laughs> where's, where's the poop, poop Robin? <laughs> uh, no, it looked really good though. Uh, that poster was awesome. It was mm-hmm. bright. It. I know there's some people comparing it to Ragnarok, but they look different. Like they're both yeah. colorful, but they look totally yeah. different. And it's great how they masked it with like the Wonder Woman with those W's and and just yeah, it it definitely spells eighties. Like mm-hmm. it's got those colors. Oh, Hawkman and Hawk Girl is in Wonder Woman. Oh, okay, I mm-hmm. thought they were just doing. Um, no idea. <laughs> yeah, Kristen Wiig was gonna do the. Um, what's it? It's a, it's a feline uh, villain. Shit. Uh, I know what you're talking about. You know what I'm talking. You know. Yeah. You know. Um, have you seen Django? No. Oh, dude. I know. Watch it. Yeah. You've obviously seen yep. it. Apparently, there might be a Django sequel with Zorro, like a Django slash Zorro crossover. Oh. Supposedly, there was a, I, I think saw they that said on there Facebook. Was, you yeah. did see that. Okay, yeah. 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 Um, I think there was an actual comic with, or, or something along the lines with Django and um, and Zorro. I think they're a little different here, are they not? Pretty uh, close. Dude, I'm not sure. Western and... Hold on. Let me see here. Working well, on Django and Zorro crossover uh, might actually happen. Antonio Banderas? <laughs> oh, hey. I, I guess there... Was there a book? Supposedly there was a book. For the first time in print, the Academy Award-winning screenplay of the blockbuster film Django Unchained was scenes that didn't make the final cut. No, never mind. I originally published 2013. be interested how that would play out. Obviously, oh, Tarantino sorry. Would Django and Zorro is a seven-issue crossover comic book miniseries co-written by Matt Wagner and Quentin Tarantino. It stars oh, Django oh from Django Unchained and also Spanish hero of the West, El Zorro. Hmm. As a fan of the original Zorro, not the second one, and as a fan of Django, I think that'd be pretty funny. I would, and be awesome. by pretty, pretty awesome. Um, they need Zorro. Would that, I, I would, would love that to see a make Zorro it movie. count as his tenth, or would you kind of slide that in like how he did Kill Bill? That's a, call it, it's that's like well, that's technically one as as a sequel. Like you know, so then you would subtract one from Django, and Django and Zorro of. would be one. I suppose that'd be. In, I think he's just lying. Yeah. He'll is he's gonna say <laughs> it's 10. been the yeah. biggest con ever. Yeah. Well, Only doing ten. They'll do that though. Well, we were talking about um, Cheetah. Thank you. That's who it was for Wonder Woman. Cheetah. Cheetah. Um, really? Well, look at Jay Z. We were talking about him. He said he was going to retire, and then he comes back and knocks another one out of the park, and people get super, super excited for it. Look True. at Cher. Same thing. How many uh, farewell <laughs> tours has she done? And how many people talk about Cher these days? Yeah. Good job, Nick. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, good job. Um, but. I think it, it, I think it's more of a, a ploy just to get people hyped for his next movie or his final movie or anything like that. Let's, and then he's going to yeah. get bored, write another one, which might be this one, and then people are going to get back on it again. It's like at the oh. end of the day, I don't think he's had a weak one yet. I would say like the hateful eight, if you'd have to say, is like it's kind of it's was, not for everyone, but it has its weak. moments where it's like if you wanted to rank all his, mm-hmm. which they're all good, mm-hmm. let's say hateful eight kind of falls a little bit under the rest. Hateful eight is. So, um, Quentin Tarantino loves films. Yeah. And when I was watching Cinema Sins, he's like, he, he, you might love Quentin Tarantino movies, yeah. but no one loves Quentin Tarantino movies more than Quentin Tarantino, who loves himself so much. <laughs> so I think Hateful Eight is his biggest ego stroke out of all of his movies. He yeah. just like, it's the equivalent of playing with yourself because you love yourself <laughs> so much. Like, there's so many Quentin Tarantino isms in that movie. It's just a little too much. Like Sounds it, like Shia LaBeouf watching all his films in the theater. Yeah, but I think Tarantino <laughs> watches them and just revels over his oh, work. I know. Yeah. You know. Um, either uh, way, I think that'd be really cool. Yeah. Has him in the um, background before he goes to bed. Puts the sleep timer on. <laughs> Good night. <Dango. laughs> um, Monday is Monday is uh, E three. Or at least it's already E three. It's coming up because oh, uh, tomorrow on Monday, June tenth. The Marvel's Avengers game from Square Enix, and I believe it's another company, is coming out. And they're like, it's like this trailer. massive, massive game. It's a trailer. Yeah. They only released a teaser once. Yeah. But 
I'm this is going to be supposedly the definitive Avengers game. You can customize your characters in it. You can play online or by yourself. All RPG sorts of stuff. stuff. You can play RPG or like MMO. Almost. I believe so. Yeah. Which obviously is timing with Endgame and everything like that. Yeah. But yeah, E3 is coming out. There's a bunch of games. Uh, Sony's not going to be in it or Microsoft's not. No, Sony's not going to be in it yeah, this Sony, year. Nothing from them this year. E3 is this weird kind of entity that's it's awesome. But yeah. at the same time, there's so many moments where you're like, what's going on here? Like where they're like. Just have a guy on stage talking about the game. Mostly people now are just waiting for the trailers to come out online because they will the day that it happens. And these big conventions that cost thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands just to run and then thousands of dollars just to go because hotels and waiting in line and all that stuff. Um, So that's exciting. I'm excited to see some new games. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I apparently Assassin's Creed, the Viking one is going to be revealed, but I kind of don't want them to like. They just released the DLC for The Fate of Atlantis. I'm playing it right now. I am so behind on Odyssey. It's not even funny, but because um, I'm still on the original. Yeah. I haven't touched any of the DLCs. I accidentally fell into the Do you first get the play. DLC? Look, look at this. Fucking I downloaded it all. <laughs> well, I got <laughs> I pretty much got the gold one or ultimate version. It gets me most the season of pass them. and well, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It gets me everything pretty much. So Yeah, I won't spoil anything. It's okay. Like the... the, the Ethan was playing Origins. Yeah. And he was telling me how much he like really likes Origins. And I'm like, dude, Origins is so much so focused. So much care got put into it where Odyssey is like, let's just throw a bunch of shit on there. But for your bang for your buck, excuse me, there's a lot of game in it. Like oh, yeah. out like a couple hundred hours worth of gameplay if you're really investing your time into it. It's just there's not too much substance to what you're doing. But anyways, E3 is happening. Um, 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 what else is there? Two things. <laughs> <laughs> apparently Brie Larson thinks that Captain Marvel is worthy enough to lift Thor's hammer that's her saying it mm. and to that I say uh no no and no. not only are you not worthy but they released a clip for the DVD release where she pretty much assaults a guy just by looking at her and asking her to smile and the dude is being like he's flirting for he's flirting with her it's it's a little hard flirting yeah yeah and they're overemphasizing it to like for, for the whole, like, Brie Larson is a feminist and let's make sure that men look like absolute terrible people. Um, and not that it doesn't happen. And yeah. men are creepy, sure. But, yeah. like, she, like, crushes his hand and then steals his bike. So I don't know if anybody that hurts somebody just by saying, you know, why don't you smile? Mm-hmm. And, you know, you hurt him, you assault the guy, and then you steal his bike. Sorry, you're, you're not worthy of yeah, that hammer. Yeah, agreed. And, and not, and Brie Larson, You're no Captain America. Yeah, you're yeah. no Captain America. 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 Yeah. Um, yeah, so that was that was pretty interesting. I'm just surprised that they released that clip. Like, yeah. it wasn't even in the movie. Yeah. Like, that's what it, I was like. I'm like, is in this the movie, in the movie? I don't remember it. She just, like, ignores yeah. him and then just takes his bike, which makes yeah. sense to me. That's fine. It's like, yeah, screw this guy. I'm going to take his bike, which yeah. is fine. I, I Again, I've mentioned it numerous times. I hated that movie, but, like, in that scene, if like, between the two scenes, they went with the right one. Yeah. She... She like waited for him to go in, then she stole his bike. I'm not yeah. saying that one's better than the other, but to show that he assaulted him for no reason. Now it's you're like, just trying too hard. Now you're just trying yeah. really hard. And like again, a clip that wasn't even in the movie. Yeah. Um, and then what else we got here? What else we got here? Dark. I'm like flying through this shit. Which one? Dark Phoenix. Oh yeah, we can talk about Dark Phoenix. Oh, actually, I want to go through the Game of Thrones sellers. They released the Game of Thrones salaries. A of kajillion dollars. One billion. Uh, so this is uh, from finance101.com. How much Game of Thrones actors earn per episode and their total net worth. Is it like half a million or something? Well, more. that's an episode. Per episode, yeah. Uh, but Or more. I think it was almost a million an episode by the end of it. Certain characters that got up to that point. Like yeah. We're talking like the top three, which is like Tyrion, uh, John, and Daenerys. So John makes 500,000 per episode or made technically yeah. as a total net worth of 12 million. Mm. Uh Cersei, she is at also 500,000 per episode and she is currently sitting at around 9 million in total net worth. Daenerys is 8 million net worth. No. Uh hold on, Nikolai. He didn't say. Oh, sorry. Nikolai, so Jamie Lannister's is 500,000. Uh, the guy that played Peter Baelish, he was at a hundred thousand to two hundred thousand per episode. Uh, actor total net worth eight million. Lord Varys, Baldy McBalderson, a hundred thousand to two hundred thousand. Clegane, hundred thousand to two hundred thousand. Yeah. Jorah Mormont, aka Captain Friendzone, one hundred thousand to two hundred thousand. So there's, a, there's basically Theon. a tier. I, yeah, I want to get to the to the main people. Uh, um, what's his face? Bran was only, was only getting ten thousand per episode. 
<laughs> even towards the end? Even towards the end. Because well, he barely did anything. Yeah, 10000 for Sam. Maisie Williams was getting 100000 to 200000 per episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, Davos, 300000 Oh, shit. Uh, Masande, 100000 Osha? Oh, Osha. Osha. She was in like the... Brienne. Season, Brienne Tarth, 100000 to 200000 Peter Dinklage was making 500000 along with yeah. the other ones. Marjorie Tar- Tyrell, Tyrell, hundred to two hundred thousand. Tywin Lannister. They don't know, but he's worth five million. Come on, find me the good ones. He was probably making three, four during his run. Yeah. I would imagine that it's no. it was super early though. It was super so. early because like he wasn't like although he was a main ish character. Like in the beginning, they were only making of like twenty five thousand an episode. And yeah, it wasn't yeah. until later on that they started to like. Well, you he know, got up to the sixth up uh, fifth season. Mm. Yeah, he died and at, at that season. point, is it sixth season, fifth, fifth. Sorry, so fifth. at that point they were probably uh, doing six, about a hundred. Six is 000. where what's his nuts gets, <coughs> uh, or is it fourth? Maybe fourth. We got up to the fourth season. Yeah, mm. that's right, because that's mm. when, and then fifth, that Tyrion's over in Essos. Hey, we're halfway there. Yeah. Ah. Um, this one was surprising. I thought she would have made more. Uh, Sophie Turner, a hundred thousand to two hundred thousand, but I think it's the same as uh, my as, amazing. amazing. Yeah, yeah. Um, Melisandre. 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 I don't know. It doesn't say. Command. Grey Worm. Oh, I, I skipped by it. He made a dollar. He made one dollar and lost his penis. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 500000 for Amelia Clark. That sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so you have your yeah. top build cast. Is yeah. like, and then everybody else, uh, all, all the Lannisters pretty much. Does it say her net worth? Because I saw on Facebook, I thought like oh, the video, uh, it was about $8 million was her net worth. $13 million. $13 She also has million. a large net worth of $13 million. Nice. It's crazy. Uh, kid but also the solo Rehab, story helped. Right? I saw that. Like he yeah. was like for de- probably for depression and stuff like because like he was abusing and alcohol. And, yeah, yeah. He's also a use. massive gambler. Like yeah. he oh. said, he didn't want to go back to the show because he's like, I don't know. I, it, this was one publication saying it, and I don't know how much this is, but he loves gambling. Like he was doing photo shoots so they can put Jon Snow on VLTs. That's how much he loves really? gambling. Yeah. Did you see all the reaction uh, videos they had for like when they found out that Jon Snow was going to stab yeah, uh, yeah. Daenerys? That was, was an like, interesting video. And then yep. the one where yeah, uh, like, Varys done. found out he was how he died. Oh, he was so pissed. He was pissed. Well, like, it's part of that two-hour docu- documentary, which yeah. I haven't seen yet. I no, I know. Me weekend. neither. Yeah. But, is that uh, on? Where is that on? No, no. It's, it's part of HBO. So, okay. like, the Sunday they didn't release anything, they basically had this two-hour, uh, like, of the last episode, last season kind of thing, mm-hmm. um, kind of tying it all together in the last table read of everything. And so, yeah. That kid Harrington reacting to like, killing Daenerys, like she's just like, yeah, and he's just well, like, when she does like, this, and she's like crying, <laughs> yeah, 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 and he's just like crying his eyes out, and it's like it's too emotional for sure, but uh, yeah, it isn't, it isn't because it's when like Arya kills the ice, yeah, everyone, King, yeah, they're like, uh, ah! was it, uh, was it the Hound, the guy who plays uh, the Hound? He was just like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hello, who just came in, Ethan Dot, Endicott, Endicott. Yeah. Thanks for joining. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. What else do I have? I've got a few other now. things. Can't talk about- <laughs> we have, like we're burning through this shit. Is there anything else that you guys had? I've got like one more topic, one or two more topics. Yeah, go but for was it. there anything else that you guys were? No. No. Are you okay. No. Uh, okay. Sorry. So this is this is um, gonna go on some un- not uncharted territory because you know I'm pretty vocal about this shit. <laughs> What does the term X Men mean to you? Is it a male versus female title, or is it just? I'll start it. Sorry, with, instead of posing a question, I'm not going to start with a proposition. In my mind, the term X Men is another term from the X gene. Like these individuals have are have this X gene in them. Mm-hmm. So X Men and human, right? Human X Men. That's, that's how I that's how I kind of see it because they have the X gene. All right. That was Doctor Xavier's men. No, it's uh, from what I read on Wikipedia. It's, it's the because X of, the, oh. of the X gene. Now it could be Xavier's men, but I also like I've always looked at it as we have human and we have X Men. Okay. Not there's no gender involved in it. It's just this <laughs> is what it is. Not, not like again. Not again. We're doing it, man. Not gender stuff again. Yes. No. 
Okay. We got a fucking prime minister who decides to call it people kind. Come on, man! Our yeah. prime minister is a fucking idiot. Anyways, <laughs> oh, <here we> so <laughs> they released a, vi- a clip. A they released a clip. Oh, I know that, but <laughs> well, and every time I watch that video, I'm just like, why didn't someone throw some throw something at him? Yeah, mm-hmm. I watched the clip too. And before you get started, in the context of the discussion that was going on in that thing, so basically, what's going on is. I'll, I'll explain it before he gets into his spiel, just so you have the backstory a little bit more. So if you haven't seen the clip, it's no. basically they come back from the mission. Jean almost dies or other people almost dies. And she's getting mad at Xavier because you put people at risk just to save the human, like all the humans and stuff like that. And it's like, we're nothing. You're sacrificing us and stuff like that. Now she throws the comment out that like all oh, the women have been doing more. So it's like, you know, you should probably rethink the name and call it X women because they've been doing most of the work. Mm. So, I get how he's pissed at it and making it a gender thing. I oh, I'm not making it a gender thing. I know no. they are. Okay, anyways, yeah. but I'm I'm just saying in the context of the, her argument and in the scene, it's like whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't care. It's not gonna. I'm not gonna go up in arms about it. It's like mm-hmm. whatever. She just threw it out just to say it's like yeah, we've been doing most of the work. Call it X woman. I'd throw it out there. It's it's yeah. kind of funny how she did it and it works with the context. So just so you know a little bit more, okay. and you can get into your spiel. What do you think of that? No, it's a, I think it's a tongue in cheek comment. I think yeah. it's more along the lines of like, hey, everybody's jumping on this like bandwagon for feminism. So I'm going to throw it in there too. Although I don't think it's serious. I think yeah. it's more so like, hey, why don't you call it that? Like, I, yeah, I don't, I think that's different. That's, that's well, the why statement needed- beforehand was it seems like the women seem to be saving the men a lot around here, which isn't true historically, at least with these X Men. It's not true. Yeah. Um, I'd argue that if it wasn't for Quicksilver, this whole thing would have gone down, like wouldn't have gone down at all in Days of Future Past. But anyways, um, and so she throws it out. Couple that with the fact that Victoria Alonso, who is a producer on there, was doing an interview and says, I feel that the name X-Men is outdated and maybe we should change it to X-Women. Okay, well, that's on her. Okay, so you have a producer of the movie. Yeah. That is echoing exactly what was mentioned in this clip. Mm Mm-hmm. And so what? So sorry. No, please. They want to take out X Men and it, okay, replace it, was a comment, it with X Women or X Men and she Women made. Yeah, but X she people. was saying yeah. how essentially let's move to X people because yeah. they feel no. that the name is gender no. specific. Which me, it doesn't because I'm not on the people kind train. Yeah, it's humankind. It's been mankind forever. It has yeah. nothing to do with gender. It's just who like who we are as a species. Yeah. Okay. And then X Men with an X gene, and they happen to be Xavier's people, mm-hmm. right? But it's based off the X gene on Wikipedia. It has nothing to do with gender. So a comment like that that was echoed by the producer, I thought was really like you guys are you guys are really doubling down, yeah. like doubling down on yeah. this, grasping at straws, basically. Yeah, and it was said by Jennifer Lawrence, who has stated that. Oh, uh, there's a huge inequality in the in the wage gap for uh, male and female actors, which there has been. But she's one of the highest paid actresses in Hollywood. So it's kind of like maybe you shouldn't be talking because you're reaping a lot of benefits here. Yeah. 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 There's a lot of that stuff going on. And it was a very cringy clip because of the fact that if you look at all the X-Men movies, Mm -hmm. that's not the case. Right. Um, it's and and not it's they've worked as a team to yeah. save the world. Not women have been saving your asses because yeah. that's not the case. It's just curious about you guys on that one. I hmm. think comments like that just make. Um, I know I'm get, the way it's going to come out is not the way I mean it, but it makes women sound more weak. Yeah. And and I say that only because it's like, well, why can't we do it like this? Like it's like it's such a minuscule thing. Yeah. Yeah. X Men was based on, you know That's my scan- understanding of it. And if I'm yeah. completely wrong, you can no. tweet me at the F words G, you can email us at the F word podcast and say yeah. I'm wrong. You can comment in opinion. the YouTube section. It's yeah. an opinion whether it's right or wrong in yeah. another person. It, it's doesn't what, matter. my understanding of what X Men means versus I think human. It, it gets to a point where it almost comes across as now you're just you're 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 being almost whiny about it. Like well, of course, like, yeah. well, we want this too. And it's like, okay, just like X Men was was a title of a you can, as much as we all love these movies, they're fictional characters, you guys. Like these yeah. are fictional freaking characters. If you're gonna be like that over a fictional character, yeah, man, there's bigger things in this world that you need to worry about. And like, yeah, if you're gonna be nitpicking every single thing, 
Yeah. Oh man, it is going to be a miserable existence. Like oh, leave well, that shit is. where it is. <laughs> but it's like, a big issue because of that. Because it is there are bigger things behind it. Yeah. So yeah. aside from the fact that it's fictional, it's that it's the whole battling of the identity politics that's been going around the whole yeah. male versus female all of that and and they're they're throwing it into movies they're going out of their way to make those happen um again yeah. brie larson has stated outright that she is using captain marvel to push her feminist agenda and a lot of people can't say anything because the hollywood system does lean towards one way and if mm-hmm. you don't follow that way you can be ostracized i talked about it not too long ago where chris evans is actually going against anybody that is pro trump mm-hmm. like it and he's like he was talking about how he's not, he may not have to he can't be friends or whatever with tom brady because tom brady is a pro trump person it's like mm-hmm. that's exclusion is not the way to do it and, and so yeah. i already went on my rant so the larger issue is that these things are seeping into mm-hmm. our um our movies and our tv shows and everything like that and it is for something that's been around for so long since I believe the sixties, maybe more, and and has more of a meaning than just male and female, because then you're just reducing it to just well, that. That's the thing. If they're looking at it just that, then you're very small minded at the end of the day. If you're like mm-hmm. nitpicking that one word, it's well, like, it's just you don't understand. You don't understand what it means then. Yeah. So what you're using is a word that doesn't mean that, but you're taking it and weaponizing it and using it to victimize a certain subset mm-hmm. of individuals which I think is wrong and it sends the wrong message. Be- and it also sends that you have no idea what this property means. Yeah. So you, you individuals, you people are not the right people to be doing yeah. anything with this stuff. Right. Yeah. Uh, but I also hear that the movie is not very good. I haven't yeah. seen it myself, so I can't say, but uh, I hear it's, it's not that good. I, I heard- find the comment that Chris Evans made hypocritical though, because I think his whole basis towards Trump is how um, he is prejudiced towards certain uh, individuals and exclusion and yet here he is ma- doing the same thing with tom brady yeah so because yep. he may have a political tie that goes one way that doesn't reflect oh, what yeah. chris evans has so in that meaning you're you're being the definition of a hypocrite yeah which they again which they don't yeah notice and they because and, and, and so the further off from the fringes that you get the more hypocritical you become on both sides of the yeah. spectrum yeah and because they're in the forefront also don't forget they ha- they're pushing a product and the product is supposed to represent something. Unfortunately, m- many of them don't understand that this product is, like you mentioned, is hypocritical. Yeah. And it, it's it's a really weird balance. So I don't know. I saw that. I thought it was interesting. I wasn't a yeah. huge fan of it. In the clip in the movie, to me, is not that bad. It, it is what it is kind of thing. But the comment from the producer, yeah, that's dumb. Like, yeah. You're not so, going to change how many decades of history and spit on Stanley's legacy on top of that. Yeah. Like, well, come on. So... Why release that clip? That clip showed nothing. It did nothing for the movie. Why release that clip as no, an advertising see, clip? You see the aftermath of what their their mission was all about and where Xavier's head is. So it's not for nothing at the end of the day. Now, they're having an argument because like she's not, I'm not game with what you're trying to push here. It's mm-hmm. like, what are you trying to prove? So within the movie, it makes sense. It's a clip for, at the end of the day, for a clip's sake. I mean, the fact that they released that has that X woman in it. I mean, that's, I know where you're... It's a marketing move. It's a marketing move, sure. Which is where it goes back to them yeah. pushing... But it's not for us. nothing, yeah. but... No, it, but uh, again, this goes back to the Captain Marvel thing. Why are you releasing a clip that wasn't even in the movie as a promo for the DVD release wow. that is showing a female assaulting and stealing a guy's... Assaulting a guy and then stealing his bike, where in the movie, she just stole the bike. Yeah. Which we've seen many characters do before. Hell, the Terminator didn't do something until the guy put the cigar on his chest. <laughs> then he decided to rip shit and break everyone in that pool hall. And that's the fucking Terminator. There's yeah. another double standard there, though, too. With the Terminator? No, uh, with <laughs> with the with the comment. like So the guy makes a comment to Brie Larson's character, so sh- it's okay for her to kick his ass mm-hmm. and take his bike. That's, what, that's my so argument against it. Why if, is that if okay? If a female, hypothetically... I'm not, I'm not trying to be whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. about this, but so if a, if a female makes a cat call towards me or says something inappropriate to me mm-hmm. by definition then am i allowed to punch her and take her bike based no, on captain marvel rules because i'd be in are. jail 
exactly. <laughs> right? So exactly. Quality. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and that's where like yeah. it's got to go two ways, and that's where I don't. And, and no one knows. It's yeah. it's we're we're, th- we're navigating in this territory. We don't know. We're far behind, and yeah, I think 100%. I think we've come a long way. Yeah. And I think there is still a a, a gap that needs to be mm-hmm. bridged, and like in terms of like you know, I mean, equal pay and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I'm not saying that 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 doesn't exist, but at the same token, like. Okay, there comes a point where you have to just, yeah, think about what you're doing and saying before you just go ahead. For sure. And do it. Well, yeah. at, at what point do you allow agency to an individual? I was listening to a podcast at one point where um, they were talking about a movie, and the movie was called Lost in America. And in that movie, there's a loveless relationship there, loveless marriage. Mm-hmm. The guy didn't get the job that he wanted, and they ended up getting a trailer, traveling off or whatever. And the one night, the the wife goes and spends all the money at the casino. And the commentator on there was blaming the husband, not the woman, because historically this commentator will find any reason to shit on men, even though he is a man himself, uh, and really push identity politics into every like I've been listening to these guys talk about movies for about two years, and every single year it's dub- this guy's doubling down while the other guy's like remaining the same. Mm. And the guy posed the question: Well, don't you give any agency to the wife? who wasted like who spent all this money gambling without telling him the guy wakes up the next day yes he might have uprooted their lives to do it but they still had hundreds of thousands of dollars that they can start a new life with yeah, yeah. she threw that all away because she was in a loveless marriage yeah <laughs> so when do you start giving there 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 are things that society has to work on which i feel that hollywood shouldn't be involved in at all but that's just me um but when do you start giving agency to the characters? Let's say you have that character. Because in my mind, that wife was in the wrong. Mm. And the husband was in the wrong beforehand. Just because the husband wasn't that great of a husband. He never cheated on her or anything. Yeah. At least I don't remember. Yeah. But why does that make it okay? Because he wasn't that great of a husband. And then they, that he was maybe the catalyst for this loveless marriage. That we're not giving any agency to the wife that wasted, I don't know, $200,000 or whatever much money they had. So in the same breath... To everything else when do you stop allowing people to play the victim card and when do you start giving them agency where there's it's not about equal outcome it's just about equal opportunity accountability too and accountability to each person and I, and I feel there's no right or wrong there's no right or answer um, there are some wrong answers for sure and it's really tough to navigate for those so mm-hmm. and, and, and it's, it, again stuff like this clip because the way I'm thinking about it why why that clip out of all the things in this movie that you have, two hour and a half, two and a half hour movie that you have, there are so many other clips you can show that'll get me to watch the movie. This that that clip does not make me want to watch the movie. It'll because it's a, it's a piece of dialogue that is very inconsequential because in the movies already we already knew Mystique and Xavier have had beef with each other mm-hmm. and that she doesn't buy she doesn't like the things that he does. Days of Future Past we saw it. Yeah, and again same with the Captain Marvel clip for the DVD release. Mm-hmm. You could have shown so many other clips from that movie. Why that one? Because it wouldn't. Uh, any other clip wouldn't result in what's happening right now. Wouldn't Would, service the narrative. Wouldn't wouldn't carry the conversation further. You see a clip, you look at it, you talk about it for maybe a minute. Mm-hmm. It's a pretty cool movie. Can't wait till it comes out, and that's the end of it. Mm-hmm. You see something that evokes an emotion, whether it's anger, whether it's whatever. Typically, the more negative the emotion evokes, the more mm-hmm. that you're going to be talking about it. So in that regard. I think it was a genius marketing move. And that's why I said it was a marketing yeah. move because now it's going to get a whole bunch of other conversations going mm-hmm. and people on, you know, social media are going to like, Oh, yeah. did you see that? Da, da, da. It's going to be like any publicity is good publicity, right? Yeah. Like it doesn't matter what you're going to do. That's a good point. But, and it's, and again, the more negative emotion that you could evoke, yeah. the more of a, of a, of a, of a what you call it an impact it's going to have on you yeah. right so i it's, mean even if it's a really cool movie like when we mm-hmm. saw the preview for you know of Av- avengers or whatever mm-hmm. it was when uh with endgame we're like oh it's so cool you know blah, blah, blah. can't wait till the movie comes out and that was it yeah right it's a positive one but oh, did it finish i think so do you want to run over and see what it says hmm. interesting all right well, anyways, lives cut off. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, yeah, I never. Oh, it's just paused. There we go. I never saw the clip, paused. but uh, you yeah. know, I. Yeah, it, it, I, I think it's again, it's just a marketing move, and yeah, and try I, to make it that relevant. Comment, 
Like, are you talking about the Dark Phoenix one? But kind of both. It's yeah. it's, it's kind so of the Dark an Phoenix overarching. One, really, it was literally the last thing that was almost said, mm-hmm. and in a two minute, two and a half minute clip. clip. Yeah. So it's like, had that not been said at all, we wouldn't be having this conversation. You're right. Well, exactly. And but so, but again, leaving interesting... it at the end is a recency effect. It's and, the last thing you see. It's the last thing you see. Does that, and we'll, you'll only know when the movie comes out in theaters if that equates to dollars or not. Mm-hmm. Because there is a thing, I know I knew the X-Men brand has had its ups and downs, so we don't know how strong it's actually going to open in general, even without this clip, yeah. right? Uh, people are rating it low. <laughs> they're already rating it very low, just just on um, just on the, 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 the movie experience, how the movie is, yeah. right? Yeah. So, which may not have anything to do with that clip. No one else has mentioned the clip that has been reviewing it, but it's just not everybody that has seen that clip. So yeah. it could be one of those very much like the Captain Marvel one where it wasn't even in the movie and they just threw it out there, which again, my mind goes, what's the point? Show yeah. me what's in the movie. Yeah. Because it yeah. doesn't it doesn't service anything. Um, yeah. But yeah. I'm one of those people that actually liked Apocalypse too, so I'll probably go see this one for sure. <laughs> yeah, Apocalypse is a weird one. There there are there are many many like things it. I like, but I don't feel that it's as good as the sum of its parts. Yeah. That's where my mind is on Apocalypse. Fair enough. And then there's a, a there's some missed opportunities specifically with Apocalypse himself yeah. that they could have uh that they could have really Surprise doubled down it, on. Yeah. Um and uh I think that's it. Do you guys have anything yeah. else? No. I don't think there's some good movies coming out this uh next few months. Like Men in Black's coming out. Here comes the Men uh, in Black. Chris Hemsworth, and with, yeah. basically Valkyrie and Valkyrie Thor. And Thor man. Yeah. <laughs> so that'll be very interesting. I still haven't seen Detective Pikachu. That's on my list. I haven't seen it. Man, I haven't gone to a movie in a long we time. Talked about. I already kind of talked about uh, uh, John Wick. Sorry, what does it say? Uh, how much time is left? I don't know. It paused for a second, so my guess is it's probably going to be about ending in about minutes. like five Started minutes about, or something yeah, like that. You um, want, sorry, you already talked about John Wick John last Wick time. John Wick three. three. Good. I need to go see that. Very Detective much so. Pikachu. I want to go see. Yeah. Aladdin, I'm curious to see. Aladdin, so, I, I, that one, I'm kind of, that's the most one I want to see. Yeah. Like, that's the one that stands out the most. Um, and then what else is there? And I'll probably end up seeing X-Men. I've seen all, all the other I'll ones in theater. I'll sure. most likely see it. I need to see them again. I Like, I've seen, like, and that's another one. Like, when did the first X-Men movie come out? 99. 99 or 2000. Jeez, one of the two. And it was, aside from Blade, because Blade came before Blade. it. Blade. Blade. Laser. Blazer. Uh, the X-Men was, like, X-Men the first. Amazing. Yeah, really like good. Yeah, there, Three, there's obviously some, was like which one did we go see? Days of Future. Days Past. of Future Past. That, that one was yeah, great. That, that was, was that one. was the reboot. That was mm-hmm. like retconning uh, everything before it. Mainly yeah. with three, I guess you could say. The only concern that I've been hearing from some of the reviews that I've uh, I've listened to is that that retcon didn't end up doing anything because they ended up doing some stuff in the new one that goes against the retcon so okay they've kind of like slapped themselves or shot themselves in the foot for what they tried to establish Paid but attention to the continuity i don't know <laughs> it, it's really hard when you start getting into time yeah. travel and what's retcon and what's not it's like i don't know it's really tough for god's sake back to the future is complicated yeah man end game is still complicated <laughs> end game is still i mean i still get it but then there's stuff i'm like so that's about know. 70 million away is from it? beating Avatar. For sure, guys, if it cuts off, have a great night. See you all night. Yes, you bet. If it does cut off, we'll see you next week. You oh, too. a minute 42 left. Mm-hmm. Um, and then one last thing. If you, I'm not going to go into the actual thing that's going on. If you are a person that follows Twitter, you've probably seen something called hashtag Vox Adpocalypse. There is this thing going on where a lot of channels are being demonetized based on one person complaining about it from one political side. All I'm saying is that to hurt everybody else because you decided to be hurt on a platform where you can stop viewing certain things isn't right. And Vox, which is Vox Apocalypse, Mm -hmm. has a pundit on there or somebody that works for them that has been crying foul on another individual. And essentially, YouTube's thing was, well, we'll just demonetize anybody that speaks on these certain topics. Oh, wow. And Vox, is, has, I believe, has gotten like a $20 million thing from YouTube. They make a ton of money. They're backed by CNN. This individual makes more money than all of these other platforms that are on YouTube. And yet they felt because they were they got their feelings hurt, instead of just not listening to it, they went out of their way to ruin it for this person, but ultimately ended up ruining it for a lot of other Check people. So <laughs> uh, it's one of those things where this no matter what side you lean on it's not right so if you do f- see vox adpocalypse going around retweet it look it up 
make your own opinions on it. I'm not going to tell you what my opinion is. I'm not, and I don't want you to have uh, to borrow anyone else's opinions. But I think it's very important when you're talking about that kind of thing. what companies are doing these days to um, silence certain people. Mm-hmm. And it's a very, very large, large, large conversation that is not for this. But I'm just saying it, I think it's something very important because there's a lot of innocent people that are getting demonetized for uh, for no reason, essentially. Yeah, press that share button. And then, oh, finally, one last thing before I go. Before we go. You hit it, but I think it's just lagging. Did it? Oh, there, there it is, is. And it shared. Uh, one last thing, one last thing, one last thing. I promise. This is my last thing so we can go. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. I shared this on my Facebook. <laughs> I'm a real boy. I'm a real boy. Okay. You guys know me. I'm a pretty pessimistic person. <laughs> yeah. I'm not a very. Oh, yeah. You, you put a video up or something that you said you should check this out. Yeah, I'm not an optimist. A lot of those optimistic things. Optimist Prime. Yeah, I'm not any of that. It doesn't resonate with me. It it feels it, it just I don't know. It just something about me doesn't connect with a lot of optimistic views, which sounds fucked up, but that's just the way that I am. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm very much a realist, but again, sometimes that borderlines in other ways. Um, but Joe Rogan experience number thirteen oh nine. Hmm. I've been listening to Joe Rogan for many years. He's had some incredible guests. Mm-hmm. This guy is the first guy that has the words and the way that he puts things together, not just for happiness. He's an investor. He's a billionaire. Mm-hmm. But the way that this guy understands the way that the world works, from politics to just his own sheer happiness, is something I've never heard anybody say before. Mm-hmm. So I, I want everybody to please, please take the time and listen to... Joe Rogan Experience, number 1309, with his guest, Naval Ravikant. Naval oh. Ravikant. Please, please. That's familiar. You, look him up. Yeah. But the way that it's a two-hour uh, podcast, but just put it on, listen to it, whatever. I'm, I've, this is my third go through listening to it because there's so many things in there that I'm not going to be the type that's going to say, oh, it changed my life. But there's a lot of things that I'm revisiting and reviewing hmm. because of it. And I don't do that kind of stuff I'll often. So I'm going to leave everybody with that. 1309. And, oh, oh yeah, the Uncharted movie. And Tom Holland is going to be Nathan Drake, which set December 18th, 2020. Yeah. Forgot about that. We'll yeah. talk about that next time. Yep. Yeah. Drake. Yeah. Tidbit. Drake. Teaser. Do you guys have anything else? No. I'm all good. Thanks for letting me come in. Dude, thanks for coming. <laughs> thanks for I'm coming, letting man. You, you should be here. <laughs> yeah, man. Your name is still the Marquis. I'm working on the website. Marquis. Marquis. Marcus. Yeah, I'm working on the website. I'm going to use that Squarespace that everyone's been talking yeah. about. I heard it's really good. And then I got a friend of mine, or not a friend of mine. Well, he is a friend, but he's also been on the show before, Jimmy Gunos, and he's going to work on <laughs> not some Not a friend of mine, but a friend logos. of mine. <laughs> um, well, I mean, oh, it's, it's like, awesome. He it's knows weird. what he's doing. Yeah, he's, he's, yeah, he's, he's very smart. Good. Um, but that's it for me. This has been in the F word, the, 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 the F word. Um, make sure you're following us on the F word podcast on Instagram. Make sure if you feel like it, make sure if you feel like it, if you feel like it, you can always go to Instagram and or, Facebook and follow us at the <laughs> F word. Um, and if wherever you're listening to, whether it's Anchor, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Breaker, Castbox, Overcast, Pocket Cast, Podbean, Radio Public, or YouTube, thank you for listening. Uh, it means a lot every single time, whether it's one person, 20 people, 75, whatever it is. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we appreciate it. If you are on a platform where you can like, comment, uh, or anything like that, even let us know how how the show's doing or if, what you'd like to see in the show. We could look at incorporating that. Anything. Always we're very appreciative of it. And, uh, yeah, you can always find me on Twitter at the F4G and email us at the F4 podcast at gmail.com. Gentlemen. Yes. I'm G. I'm Nick. I'm Beth. And we're out. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.